welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to introduce you to DaVinci Resolve from Blackmagic Design. This is a very high-end video editing and colour correction package that you can download and use absolutely for free. No, you cry, that can't be true. You can't get a high-end video editor for absolutely nothing. Well, as you shall see, you absolutely can. Right, here we are once again on a Windows 10 desktop, and I'm going to show you how to get your free copy of DaVinci Resolve. So we'll go to um, Chrome, go to a browser, and we've gone to the website blackmagicdesign.com, which is a, a really cool website. If you just scroll down their homepage, you know, they're, they're working on really big things, like they were working on Ant-Man, all those sorts of stuff. Very, very exciting. Anyway, uh, we need to go to products, you may have guessed that, and we need to pick out DaVinci uh, Resolve and Fusion software. They make all sorts of exciting hardware, but we want the software stuff. And you'll see it says DaVinci Resolve 12 from $995. And immediately you go, ah, oh, Chris, you told us it was free. Uh, but however, if you click on Learn More, it will take you to a DaVinci Resolve page. And we can go down here, see all the things it can do. This is really high-end stuff. And if you scroll to the bottom, you will discover um, three versions, there we are, of DaVinci Resolve. There is the version down here with the control panel that costs you about $30,000. There is a version called Resolve Studio, which is the $995. But look, over here, there is DaVinci Resolve 12, the free DaVinci Resolve for professional editing for free for Mac or Windows. And therefore, you're probably thinking, well, Chris, it's massively cut down. So I can show you that. If we go to compare, here it is again, look and it tells you what you do and do not get in different versions. And to be honest, what you don't get is certain things to do with noise reduction, collaborative working, and 3D editing. So for example, you don't get noise reduction in your CUDA and OpenGL GPUs. You don't get concurrent stereoscopic 3D grading. Probably didn't need that. And you don't get stereoscopic um, 3D convergence adjustments. If you go down to look at audio, for example, it's all basically there, but you don't get noise reduction again through your GPU. Um, you haven't got here in um, process speed and accuracy. You haven't got the same stabilizing things, you know, uh, in, again in 3D. So really, you don't lose very much. You do get the full package. So to get this thing, we just need to go to um, download for Windows, unless you're using a Mac, but I'm using a Windows PC. And you get to a screen like this, which because of the resolution I'm recording in, I will just full screen and you have to put a few details in. Now, I would say before I do this, I'm now downloading version 12.2. I previously run version 12, so I'm doing an upgrade for me. I've had absolutely no problems with, with spam or anything else having done this for. So I'll just put some details in here. And uh, there we are, I've got some details on the screen, obviously not showing you all of those. Register and download. And there we are, it's going to download and uh, we'll stick it in my C download folder and save that. And it's coming down, it's what, about 352 megabytes. So it's a, a reasonable size download, but it's not absolutely enormous. I'll leave that downloading. I'm not gonna show you the whole installation process. I'm sure you can handle that. But basically, once it's downloaded, you install it like any other application. It doesn't require you to enter software keys. It doesn't have to email you things to stick in to make it work. It's basically, you've got the file, you install it, and you have your brand new video editor. Right, let me give you a very quick demonstration of DaVinci Resolve. So I'll run up the program. It'll take a second to run up because like any decent video editor, it is a very resource hungry application. You must be running a 64 bit operating system. You must have at least eight gigabytes of RAM and at least a gigabyte of graphics RAM of GPU memory. Now you'll see it takes a while to come up in part because it spent a lot of time looking for the control surface. That is the 30,000 quid bit of hardware we haven't purchased. So this seems to be the downside of this. You have to wait each time for this to happen, but at least we've saved ourselves an awful lot of money by getting this for free. I should point out, I'm running this currently on the test rig. I put together a few videos back. That is not a very high powered PC. It hasn't got a very high power. 
GPU. And therefore, whilst this will work, if you think, well, oh, it's a little bit jerky here and there, it's not the fault of DaVinci Resolve. It's the fault of me trying to show you a high-end video editor on quite low-spec hardware. And uh, here we are, it's arrived at its project manager. We could open an existing project, but we haven't got one. So I'll do a new project. I'll call this a EC test. That sounds good enough to me and create that. And then we open up that project. Now, I should also point out at this point that I'm running currently in a 720p video resolution, 1280 by 720 resolution. So you've got a chance of seeing what's going on on screen. But normally DaVinci Resolve would look more like this, which is running at uh, 1920, 1080, which I'm sure is the minimum resolution that Blackmagic Design think you'd run it at on at least one monitor. But if we come back to our 720p screen, at least you can see the basics of what are going on. Now DaVinci Resolve basically has four different screens. It has the media screen, we're on here, where you bring your footage in. It has the edit screen where you do your um, editing. I'm sure you guessed that. It has the color correction screen with all sorts of functionality and it has the final delivery screen where you chuck out your video to a final file. So what I'm going to do is not to show you everything in this package in a few minutes because that's impossible. Very good online manual you can read for all that. But I'll just show you the basics of bringing in some footage, editing it together and chucking it out as a final movie. So we'll go to our D drive. Since I last showed you this PC, I've added an extra disk to store video files. It's good practice to run video editors with a separate video drive. And I'll therefore open up my stock video and say MISC CG. And there's four little shots there. All oh, ones come up in the monitor as I've selected it. And we'll drop them down into what's called the media pool for this project. Now it's noticed that the resolution of these clips, which is uh, 720p, is not what it was potentially expecting. It offered to change the resolution of the timeline of the project to match the footage, which is clearly a good idea. And there we have our different shots which have come in to this um, project and it gives us all the details there and indeed over there as well. So if we now go across to edit, uh, this is the edit screen. It doesn't run brilliantly well on this size of um, a display but we can if we wanted to make things easier by flicking various things on and off but I'll leave things roughly on at the moment put the effects library back as well. And if you wanted it, it was also lots of audio stuff over here, if you wanted to look at all that, really, if you want things, it's available in this package, but at the moment, I'll save us the space. But what we'll do, uh, put that back again, I think, uh, right. let's work like that. I will take my um, media pool. Am I confusing you? I'm confusing me as well. Anyway, I'll take our media pool, the shots up here, and we'll click on our little robot, which will open up in the uh, source monitor. This is a standard professional video editor, source monitor, and final output monitor. And we could, of course, drag through this footage, and we might say, well, let's start the footage there. So we'll set our in point, and we'll go along, and we'll finish it there as our out point. And then we would drag that down to the timeline, and there it is as video one. And we'd see it then come up in the final monitor, and we could play it through, there we are, look, it's, aha. We could then maybe put another shot in, maybe take our uh, bio computer shot, drag that, put it down there. It's gone a bit further along. We don't maybe want quite as much as we would have. Obviously, I'd be editing a bit more accurately than this, but uh, we've now got two shots. And of course, if we played that, it would play one and then the other. If you had audio, it would be down on the audio tracks. Now, maybe we want a transition. So I'll maybe take that footage and overlap it, do a standard AB edit here. Maybe take a cross dissolve from the uh, transitions, chuck it on there, drag it out to match in. And we've now got a very simple edit with two shots and a transition. There we are, one shot, transitioning to another shot. Marvellous. Not the most sophisticated video edit in the world, but it proves a point. So let's say we've done that. We might have some color correction to do, we might not. This screen struggles at this resolution, but you can see the basics of it. Your timeline is at the top with your um, footage. And you've got all sorts of tools. You've got, for example, a curve tool. So we might just uh, work on the footage a bit like that, change the, uh, uh, the gamma curve effectively, a little bit more um, filmic perhaps, or 
overexpose if you're being cruel. Uh, and you've got all sorts of tools here. You know, if you want to do color correction work, you can't beat DaVinci Resolve. They use this in Hollywood to doing this type of stuff. Anyway, for us now, we'll just assume our, our footage is fine and we want to actually produce a final video, something you might say chuck up to YouTube. So we'll go across to the uh, format section. It's picked QuickTime. There are all sorts of formats available, all the professional formats, but for many people here, I think QuickTime would be the best. MPEG-4 video is fine. Let's do a medium data rate, if it was, say, going to YouTube. We'll render not at the source resolution. Well, in fact, it is the source resolution, but I want to use 1280 by 720 resolution. We won't export audio because there isn't any audio here. We will use a custom file name, call it test render, and we will render to, and we will browse, and we'll stick it to D and just stock video, I think. That'll be all right. We'll then add that to the render queue. So this is the actual footage we've decided to render, and we could have lots of these here, and then we press start render, and it'll start to output our clips. This will take it a little time, so I'll speed through this. There we are, it's finished. And now I'll just go back to, um, in fact, let's, let's come out of the program. We've done that now. We will save our file. And if we look, we've got our test renderers appear magically in stock video. And if we open that up, there we are. We have our movie, what we have made. Oh, isn't that amazing? Uh, the wonders of video editing. So there we are. Let's play it again because it was so exciting. There we are. I've showed you the basics of doing a bit of video editing in DaVinci Resolve. Right, a final thing I almost forgot to tell you about is Resolve's file format compatibility. And here it's worth noting that Resolve is a professional video editor. Its main contenders in the marketplace are things like Avid Media Studio, Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro and it works with all the professional file formats, no problems at all. But it does have some problems with some of the more consumer-led file formats. And to show you that, I'm going to go to a folder I've created called Format Tests and bring in three different files. Now, I do a lot of my filming in ProRes, and here I've got a, a ProRes file. These are files I shoot onto my uh, Atomos Ninja device, and ProRes files work absolutely fine. It's come in, you can see it's got a little symbol that means it's got audio. And if I went to edit, if I drag that down to the timeline, you will see there's a one of my opening closing shots, as I you see so much from my videos, but obviously the green's not been replaced yet. And you can see though it's come through with video and audio, no problems at all. So ProRes works without any problems. We've also seen that uh, MOV files are encoded in H.264, QuickTime H.264 files. They also work. I'll be editing with those in the previous segment. However, if you are shooting H.264 in the MTS format, and that's quite common, you will have some issues. There is a file in that format. It looks fine. I'll bring it down into the package, into the media pool. Again, it looks fine. If we go to Edit, and I took that to put it onto the edit line, though, there's no audio. That file was shot with audio, and you can see it's having a little think about it, so it comes across. And at the moment, the fact you haven't got audio on MTS H.264 files will be an issue for some potential users. That said, these days, a lot of cameras, including a lot of lower cost cameras, such as this uh, Canon Legra I use for some of my shots here and there, it's nice and portable, they will shoot MP4 files. And here I've got an MP4 file, which it seems to be objecting with a bit here as you first see it. But if I bring it in, drop it down there, go to edit and bring that across, this is MP4. Again, you will see, just like the ProRes, it's coming absolutely fine. Audio's there and also the video. So that's just something to be aware of if you're thinking of using DaVinci Resolve. It is a great editor. It's got great professional compatibility, but it doesn't yet deal with all consumer video file formats. Blackmagic Design developed DaVinci Resolve as a collaborative color correction tool for use by users such as Hollywood Studios. And they make most of their money servicing that market 
and selling high-end control panels, control hardware for use with DaVinci Resolve on very high-end video editing workstations. That said, they're now also very keen to enter the uh, more mainstream video editing market, and I'm sure with the release of the free version that many of us will start to migrate towards DaVinci Resolve. But now that's it for another video, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.